squares, 14. And this is on solubility product equilibrium. Salt AB has a KSP of 1 times 10 to the minus 12. Okay, and it has a KSP of 1 times 10 to the minus 12, not a sign of KSP equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 12. Uh, what's its solubility? Well, AB is a one to one ionization ratio, which tells us solubility X is equal to the square root of the KSP from our derivations the other day. And we can start off by going X, X, X squared, and then take square root of the KSP and so forth like that. But if you memorize the formulas, you can go straight to the answer a little quickly. So that's 1 times 10 to the minus 12 molar. And I made it deliberately even so it would square out very quickly. So this is 1 times 10 to the minus 6 mole per liter is the solubility. And that looks like a B choice. Now, of course, this is only one of the four uh, solubility equations. If it is a uh, 1 to 2, or a 2 to 1 solubility, then you'll have to use a cube root formula. And I just put this in there for your review. KSP over 4, so you would identify the solubility, I mean the ionization ratio, and then you can use the correct solubility equation. If you have a 1 to 3 or 3 to 1 ionization ratio, solubility is a fourth root of KSP over 27. And that capacity right there. And if you have, and we don't have any one to fours immediately available. I'll hunt one down and see if I could get it for you. But it does, it's derived much the same way. Uh, here we have a uh, two to three or three to two, and solubility X is equal to a fifth root of KSP over 108. So if you look at these, actually the square root, this would be a 2 in there. I, it's not ever put in there, but uh, except for the Q's, 4th and 5th roots, 2, 3, 4, and 5 as you go down the list of uh, ionizations. And uh, you just have to remember the, what to divide the KSP by. So this is an easy memory uh, exercise and can save you a lot of time on the exams. Okay? Any questions about that, please? Okay, you're good. Okay, on um, number two, see my number uh, This is a deal dealing with uh, properties of salts. And salts, just to talk about them for, for a moment, uh, these are ionic compounds. And you recall that ionic compounds get their name from ionization. So they are typically a metal ion plus a non-metal ion part, except for um, uh, ammonium and our ammonia derivatives. Now, it's comforting to know that you won't run into any limited ionization compounds with ammonia on it. The ammonia derivatives, whatever they may be, are all 100% soluble to almost infinite limits. So you won't have these that are 
soluble to the 10 to the minus 10th or 12th or 33rd like you do in some of the metallic uh, structures like those. Okay. Now, having said uh, salts, salts, not all salts, this is the way I like to write, read this, not all salts have same solubility. But whatever dissolves ionizes 100% no matter what. Sodium chloride solubility is somewhere around 10 molar. And you can just put gobs of it in. You can use enough, dissolve enough salt, sodium chloride, in water, in a gallon of water to push its weight, its density, its weight up to 10 pounds. You can literally form a solution that weighs 10 pounds per gallon. That's, and, other, and, and there are many other salts you can put in, bromides and uh, lead chlorides, and you can dissolve these, some of these in very high ratios and get uh, heavy water in terms of uh, density. They're used in the oil field as a workover completion fluid. A solution that has a high brine content will not destroy the uh, downhole reservoir. And you can flush out all the trash and stuff out of a well. And uh, it's a big business. And the oil business is uh, work over completion fluids. But anyway, uh, silver chloride is the square root of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10 molar. And so that's somewhere around 10 to the minus 5 molar per liter. I'm not going to try to knock it out. So you have a radical difference in solubilities. Hear me? But whatever goes into solution ionizes 100%. This might have a zillion uh, ions, a zillion uh, moles of uh, sodium chloride going to solution, and every, you won't find any molecules. That's what I'm trying to emphasize here. The same way with silver chloride. You may find two molecules dissolving, but those two molecules are ionized 100%. Anybody could on that? Okay. So this is probably the most important issue that I can... I'll pass on to you. Uh, and in the problem, all salts ionize 100%, yes. Not all salts have the same solubility, yes. Salts except ammonium chloride uh, or ammonium derivatives uh, consist of a metal and non-metal. That's correct. And so I itemized all of that in here. And that is all of those uh, D choice. Okay? Okay, uh, and this one, of course, it comes off of what I talked about a few minutes ago in terms of predicting solubility. And I should get a, you know, uh, com a complete yes out of y'all on, on this. Can you use the um, KSP to, as a measure of solubility? No. Yes. Is it the solubility? No. 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 The solubility would be uh, the square root of that. Uh, of that nature. But all of them have the same formula so you can compare because all of them would have the same mathematical uh, input into the formulas. And they all come out most fully. Any questions about that? You will have both kinds on the exam. I will have one where you will have odd ratios of ionizations. It's easy to solve. You just know those formulas. You can go down each one and calculate and use the solubility numbers to compare. But you can. You can but if they're all like this, all one to ones, don't worry about calculating. Just use the KSPs. Everybody good? That's an easy problem. I want to be sure y'all. Are comfortable with that. Uh, 
Looks like uh, B choice here is our culprit. This number four in this experience, we got this is Benny. I'm just going straight out with this. I think everybody understands the idea of ionization. It's a one to two ionization. And the KSP expression is only in terms of, of course, the product ions, because they're so small relative to the uh, amount that goes into solution and is left behind. And that looks like C choice in the collection right there. So I hope everybody's comfortable with writing ionization, uh, KSP expressions, because that's probably one of the first things of the equation, then your KSP expression, then you start manipulating numbers in a problem. And finally, we need to calculate a uh, calculate a KSP of AB if A equals 10 to the minus 6 molar and B equals 10 to the minus 8 molar. So this is just a matter of identifying the equation, writing the KSP expression, and substituting numbers. So salt AB is a one-to-one -one ionization. So that would give a KSP expression in terms of A plus, B minus, and A is 10 to the minus six, and B is 10 to the minus eight, and, well, I got a B2 on there, didn't I? Mm -hmm. ah, sorry about that, <coughs> so I need to put a square on that and, one. And, and, <laughs> 10 to the minus 8 as well. Yeah. They're both, both 10 to the minus 8. Oh yeah, sure do. Thank you, D. Okay, so that's 3 to 24. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm kind of anxious to get on to the next thing too. <laughs> okay. Uh, D choice in that one. But uh, the fundamentals of this are, are very straightforward. You will see these types again in that context on the exam next Thursday. So please, if you struggled with this, and I'll give it back to you uh, on Tuesday, be sure to check mark the ones you had you struggle with. And oh, well, of course, I'll post. You know, I post these on the website. Uh, some of you do, some of you don't. But if you need to go back and look at one, uh, they <coughs> are under uh, uh, quiz reviews. So if you need it. And this talk that I'm giving also.